from solved mysteries such as the carbon monoxide poisoning to unsolved ones such as the celebrity who hated being famous, there are many iconic and popular mysteries on Reddit. Some of the site's mysteries, however, never really got the attention that they deserved, so in this video we're going to take a look at some of those. If you generally enjoy hearing about mysteries, true crime, disappearances and the occasional conspiracy, feel free to subscribe for more content like this. So this first mystery is kind of one mystery that leads into another. When I first saw the post I thought, oh this could be, you know, quite a light-hearted one to end with, but it gets kind of dark. A post on r slash RBI around a month ago stated that OP had received multiple cheap awards on every post they ever made. As you can see, that included this post, though of course I'm sure other users would have taken that opportunity regardless. They state in an edit that they received a message which by clicking the link you can view yourself. It reads, guess who? It's someone in the comments and by the way it's not for fun. Now of course this could just be someone who saw the post and decided to mess with them, but if it is whoever's been awarding all the previous posts, it is kind of a little bit unsettling. Unfortunately, OP deleted their account at some point and I couldn't find an archive of the page to find the username to see the post history, so sorry for the lack of context on this. A few theories were put forward. Maybe it was just some random Redditor that really liked all of OP's posts, though that would be a little bit obsessive. Maybe it was a bot, but why? Then someone pointed out that the awards started after OP had commented on user gangstalking 77s post about harassment. We'll refer to him as 77 as I couldn't say the full name 10 times fast. 77 at some point deleted their account, though I was able to find a few posts and comments they made before. This user believes they are a victim of gang stalking, which if you haven't heard of I'd definitely recommend doing some research on. It is fascinating but pretty sad. I might end up doing a video about it at some point. But I digress, aside from some pretty serious if true real world examples of stalking experienced by 77, he'd also experienced spamming in the form of awards, just like OP. Whether there was an actual link between OP and 77 was never established, it could have just been a coincidence. As for what could be happening, maybe something bad happened to both 77 and OP. It is strange that they both deleted their accounts at roughly the same time after both experiencing this kind of stalking, I guess. The most recent activity I could find was on this RBI post. Though I think it's more likely that someone on Reddit is probably just messing with both of these people. Maybe someone saw 77's username or saw the post that they made on r slash gangstalking and just thought it'd be either funny to intimidate them or they're doing it seriously because they knew that they thought they were being gang stalked. So maybe they were trying to intimidate them or something. I don't really know why anyone would do that, but hey, I guess that's the internet for you. They may have done the same with other users who interacted with 77 to make it all seem more real and serious. Maybe they both really felt that they were being stalked, so deleted their accounts to avoid any further harassment. Or what if 77 is just behind it all? Maybe they just completely faked the whole gang stalking thing or maybe the, in their mind the gang stalking thing was real but they just thought if they spammed themselves and other people with awards that it would make it seem more credible. And who even knows that OP and 77 aren't the same person? Though 77 didn't just kind of insert themselves into this post, they did get tagged by another user so maybe that seems unlikely. But I guess anything could be happening. I have no idea what happened to OP, but I guess people delete their accounts all the time, so maybe it's nothing too worrying. But regardless, I do hope that 77 just took some time out to get the help that they may have needed. I mean, I'm not them, so I can't say that what they were experiencing wasn't real, but they did seem kind of super paranoid in some of the posts that they made. Around four years ago, a user posted on r slash ask a question asking why there would be 30 something Wi Fi networks apparently coming from underneath a concrete pad. The post read Hi, for the record, this is a serious post, so please no tinfoil hat comments, etc. Recently, I lived on a semi urban farm property for a few months 
and I noticed some very unusual things that I won't get into here. What I'd like to know is what reason there might be for somewhere in the neighbourhood of 25 to 30 low strength Wi-Fi networks, all with exactly the same signal strength, peaking at the same point location, to be seemingly emanating from underneath a concrete pad which is supposed to be simply covering gravel and dirt. To clarify, I used Wi-Fi Analyzer to ensure that it wasn't just a coincidental situation where lots of neighbourhood networks happened to have similar signal strength due to the distances they were from their sources. I walked in concentric circles with Wi-Fi Analyzer running and the further I got from the point location on the concrete pad mentioned above, the weaker the signals became. For example, if they were neighbourhood networks, you would expect some to get stronger as you approach the property line on one side and some to get weaker. No matter which direction you went, the signal strength degraded in proportion to the distance you were from this spot. For example, at 20 feet from the spot, at 12, 3, 6 and 9 o'clock, they would be the same strength, as would they be at 40 feet, weaker than at 20 however. There were residential homes on two sides of the property, but to the rear of the property there was a large county park and to the front there was another larger farm, where there were clearly no Wi-Fi routers. The next peculiar thing is that these networks' SSIDs would change every 5 minutes or so. They also covered the entire 2.4G spectrum from channel 1 to 14 and had total coverage over the entire spectrum. As you watch the signal strength diagram on Wi-Fi Analyzer in real time, there were peaks and valleys in signal strength, but they were all coordinated across these low strength networks. There was a single Wi-Fi network, the company network on that property I was living on, that would peak and valley in signal strength exactly in time with these low strength networks that would change their names regularly, and that covered the spectrum at exactly the same signal strength. Also, I used a Seek thermal imaging camera to check out the peak signal strength point location on the concrete pad, and the temperature at that point was about 30 degrees Fahrenheit hotter than the surrounding concrete. I drilled a hole through that part of the pad, and drilled a couple of other holes randomly at different spots on the same concrete pad. I poured water down all the holes, and only the one at the peak signal strength location would drain and drain without filling up. The others all filled up after about a half a litre of water was poured into them. Any idea what that means? Thanks. So it's all pretty mysterious. My first thought was it's got to be some kind of underground bunker, right? But still, what reason would there be to have 30 different networks all seemingly in the same spot? Unfortunately, this specific post only resulted in two comments, which is kind of surprising as I thought something like this would blow up. Though RP did also post in r slash black ops where it did spark a bit more attention. In the comments of this post, OP states that they are no longer in the area as they had to flee. They don't specify if this was anything to do with the Wi-Fi mystery or if it was completely unrelated. Before they arrived at the site, huge liquid tanks had been removed. These tanks would have left a large open space in the ground. There were buildings not too far away where vents for a possible bunker could have been located and a storm drain had been replaced which apparently could provide an access point to the hypothetical bunker. They also recalled seeing a truck make multiple late night trips for many days, removing lots of busted up new looking concrete from neighbours city trash bins. You can read for yourself what OP believes all this might mean. Later in the thread they provide a link to their eBay account which according to them is connected to their old boss and sells faulty hard drives and electronics for strange prices. The account has been active since 2009, but only has 14 reviews in the past year, all of which are positive. It seems that the seller may have moved on from selling faulty electrics, as I can only see a few women's clothing items for sale, though I was unable to see all items, as this just comes up when you click see all items, so they might still sell those and other items. OP never really provides any evidence that Cheesy Bay was linked to their boss or to this mystery or that they were selling anything dodgy at all. It's really frustrating that this mystery didn't blow up and that OP didn't post more details about Cheesy Bay and everything else because there's just so many unanswered questions with this. They did elaborate a little on a power source, stating that there are high voltage power lines that don't correspond to the city grid that run behind the property. One of the neighbours is a very wealthy man and owns a steel frame building that the power lines go into. 
They also stated that the whole area was once a military area before, during and slightly after World War II, meaning there could well be underground facilities around there. Later in the thread they also provided some photos of the area, I'll leave a link to those in the description. The thread kind of fizzles out from there and as far as I'm aware OP never updates or adds any more details to any of it. There were a couple of other discussions on Reddit, some people linking it to Pizzagate and various other theories. As fascinated as I am by this, I personally am not half as knowledgeable as you need to be about Wi-Fi to be able to theorise on why there is so many networks in that area or what it all means. Regarding the rest, however, it does seem pretty likely that OP might have been in some kind of state of paranoia and ended up jumping to pretty wrong conclusions about it all. It turned out that the boss was the owner of a distillery in Honolulu, Hawaii. He stated that he had hired OP to set up the distillery and after a while he began acting strangely. The owner later found that he'd taken apart the ceiling fan in his room because he thought people were trying to spy on him. Pills were also found in the bathroom which turned out to be a treatment for heroin addiction. The owner claims that he is not behind the cheesy bear eBay account and does not know how OP made that link. The article also states that OP had disappeared after posting on 4chan claiming he was being followed by government types and was on the run for his life. There is more detail in the article so I'll link it in the description. I honestly didn't realise when I started researching and writing up notes for this mystery that it would conclude so similar to the first but hopefully, four years on, OP is doing better now. Though despite the explanation for his paranoia, if he genuinely did find 30 Wi-Fi networks all coming from an underground location, that bit's still a mystery. So who knows what could have been going on. The last mystery we're going to look at is another post from RBI, which is pretty unsettling to say the least. User Denim Pigeon's post from around five months ago read, My friend recently began renovating a recently purchased home in the suburbs of Los Angeles. As her contractor began ripping out the ceiling, he noticed a mysterious ventilation pipe and peeked inside. Oddly, he found two perfectly paper-wrapped soft rectangles. He lowered both from the ceiling and cut open the first. Before opening the second, he called for the homeowner. She tried to open the second and the paper crumbled in her hands, revealing piles of women's undergarments curiously covered in what appears to be blood. The clothing appeared to be fairly retro and also included a vintage lipstick that when googled revealed that this must have been stored away sometime shortly after 1975. She called the police, they arrived and told her it was nothing. She also called the FBI who told her to contact the state police. Now we're turning to Reddit, what should she do? There were quite a few items of clothing that were found in the pipe. This photo shows them in a pile. Pigeon later states in the comments that the clothing was various sizes, including 36, size 6, small, and some with no sizes. I'm not too familiar with American clothes sizes, but in the UK, sizes vary greatly from brand to brand. I have every size from like a 6 to a 12 in my wardrobe, so different sizes don't necessarily indicate whether the clothing belonged to one person or a few different people. It's hard to see bloodstains in some of the photos linked in the post, however this one pretty clearly shows stains on what looks to be a yellow bikini. I have no idea what potentially 50 year old bloodstains would look like, but I could buy them looking like this I guess. This photo shows the lipstick that was found with the clothing. It's impossible to tell just looking at the photos whether the items of clothing were stained with blood or something else, but I don't understand how the police didn't do tests on this at least. It might be a long shot, but I mean, how often do people find potentially blood-stained clothes hidden away in a pipe in the home? I can't think of any logical reason why anyone would go to such lengths to hide these items. I mean, the obvious theory that I'm sure is on all of our minds is what if it could be linked to a murder or a disappearance, possibly? Surely it's worth investigating at least. As sick as this sounds, it's certainly not unheard of for murderers to take personal items from the victims as some kind of trophy or to remember the crime. One user managed to find a missing persons case on Namus, who was last seen wearing a yellow bikini. Other users posted other possible cases this clothing could relate to. 
Other theories were put forward, such as the clothing not necessarily belonging to a victim of a murder or disappearance, but that it was just some creep that stole people's underwear, I guess. There's also the possibility of the clothes belonging to a crossdresser. And back in the 70s, that definitely would have been frowned upon, so it makes sense why they would have been hidden away. But neither of those theories explain the blood, if it was blood. I mean, I guess there is other possibilities. Maybe it was just kind of old age marks, so to speak, or maybe rust from the pipe or something. But I think OP stated that the paper on the outside didn't look to be stained or anything, so that would make it seem pretty unlikely. But that's exactly why the police should have investigated, or at least done tests on the clothing, just in case on the off chance it was linked to a crime of some kind. Despite claiming that their friend had ordered a blood test kit and would be taking more photos, I'm sorry to disappoint, but this is yet another case of OP did not deliver. The post was never updated, and that was OP's last post from that account. It seems they haven't been active since. I don't know if that's just because there are no updates, or they managed to get police to take it seriously and they're investigating, or what, but I hope we eventually get a conclusion to this one. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope there was at least one that you hadn't heard of. They were all pretty new to me. I'd love to hear your theories and thoughts in the comments below and if you know of any other lesser known Reddit mysteries, again, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed and I'll see you next Thursday in a new video.